The day has finally arrived. The X Elite chips have now been put into laptops and the laptops have been released. The stakes are high on this one for Microsoft. They redesigned their hardware. They redesigned Windows. They got a lot riding on this. And they're closely working with all these manufacturers to make sure that things run smoothly. Otherwise, it's going to be embarrassing, especially when you're going after Apple and showing Apple comparisons in your keynotes. Copilot Plus PCs are the fastest Windows PCs ever built. They're 58% faster than the most advanced MacBook Air with the M3 processor. We've got Acer, we got Asus, several versions of Dell, HP, Lenovo, Microsoft, and Samsung. I got a couple on the way to do some performance tests, so make sure you check that out. These are available on pre-order. They're landing in people's hands about mid-June. I'm going to show you where to find these and the specs in a moment, but for now, what's so special about these? Well, these are all running Windows for ARM, which has been tweaked and re-architected for these new platforms to be fast and efficient. We also completely re-architected Windows 11 on a new mid minimum hardware configuration to optimize performance and battery. Speed and efficiency, by the way, is the number one goal here. It's not upgradability. So there's a give and take there. If you want upgradability, you still go with Intel or AMDs. If you want speed and efficiency, this is the way to go now. But hold on, not all software is gonna be compatible yet. And we're gonna come back to that. Now you're gonna hear the word AI a lot. Don't let that turn you off because yes, these machines are marketed as AI machines. And that's because of the new NP that's going to be uh, used by a lot of the software that's coming out. Adobe is partnered with Microsoft, so all their software is compatible to use the NPU, and that's good. Hopefully that ecosystem is going to be a little bit more available than what we've seen so far with Apple's neural engine, which has been kind of a wild garden for now. It works, and it works well for certain tasks, but we're going to see if the Snapdragon NPU is going to be a little bit more accessible for developers. Copilot Plus PCs introduce a new systems architecture powered by the CPU, GPU, and an all-new NPU running at an incredible 40 trillion operations per second. 40 trillion. And all of that with a battery that can last all day. What, everybody claps for faster than uh, MacBook Air, but nobody claps for the battery? The battery is gonna be the biggest breakthrough here because, well, PCs don't last that long. Come on, they, they spin up, they make all this noise, they make all this heat, and then they're dead within an hour or two. This is a huge breakthrough for Windows machines. Some of these laptops are supposedly last from 15 to 20 hours. I'm gonna test that out, of course. Copilot Plus PCs on Snapdragon X will deliver up to 15 hours of web browsing and up to 22 hours of local video playback that is 20% more than the latest MacBook Air 15 inch. But right now, Microsoft and these uh, manufacturing partners are positioning this to go against Apple, who's been dominating the laptop scene since 2020, as far as efficiency goes. In fact, Copilot Plus PCs outperformed the MacBook Air 15 inch by up to 23% on peak performance, and more importantly, up to 58% on sustained multi-thread throughput performance. Another stab at Apple there, definitely going after that market. Now, one of the biggest things I came across when I was testing Windows for ARM before, and specifically I did some developer tests on the Volterra box, which is Windows Dev Kit 2023, as everybody knows it. Hopefully it'll also get this new chip. I don't know, we'll see. If so, I'll get that in here as well. But when I did those tests, the x86 translation layer, the equivalent of Rosetta 2 on the Apple machines, it wasn't that great. Microsoft calls theirs Prism x86, and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, Apple has something called Rosetta 2, Microsoft has something called Prism x86, and they both do the same thing, which is they allow you to run x86 software on ARM hardware. Otherwise, your x86 software is not gonna work on ARM. Different architecture. This is a very important piece of the puzzle, and I hope that they fixed it. Prism is as efficient as Rosetta 2, combined with the performance of the silicon and the platform, Every app runs great on Copilot Plus PCs. Developers are also gonna be interested in Linux. Can we install Linux on these new machines? What is the Linux compatibility here? Well, my plan is to try that out as well. Now, typically on x86, x64 machines, you just dual boot to Linux, or you can just install Linux. And usually it's not an issue. I actually made uh, some tutorials on that on this channel before. Uh, this is a little bit different because now we're gonna need to install Linux for ARM, which does exist, but we might be limited by what drivers are gonna be available right now. Now, the X Elite comes in three different variants too. X1E and the X1, I'm guessing, is just the version, the generation. So the next one's gonna be X2. E means Elite. If there was a P there, that means it's the plus chip. So X1E, 84-100, 80-100, 
and 78-100. 84 is the skew, the higher the better, and 100 is the variant. 84 is the highest, that means it's the best one, but not every single laptop manufacturer is gonna show you what chip they're putting in it. Some of them do, so let's take a look. We're gonna go alphabetically. Acer, while they have an AI PC section, AI PCs, they didn't put up their Snapdragon machines yet. Come on, get on it, Acer. What are you doing? All the other ones did. Asus VivoBook S15 comes with the Snapdragon X Elite 12 core processor. Does not say what the SKU is. I don't know why they're out of stock. They just announced it yesterday, but perhaps they sold out of initial inventory. However, look at this. $1299.99 is much less than I expected. I thought it was gonna be at least $1,500 or more to kind of match what Apple is doing since you are getting one terabyte SSD and 16 gigabyte RAM. Now, Apple's M3 MacBook Air that's 15 inches does start at that same price, but that's for an eight gigabyte 256 SSD machine. Once you upgrade that to 16 and one terabyte, you're at $1,900. It's not exactly an apples to apples comparison. It's more like an apples to Asus comparison. I can't believe I just said that. That was just, but there are other factors to consider in this machine. It is impressive. You also get the 120 Hertz OLED display. A lot of features there for that price. Dell says XPS will be available. There is the XPS 13 starting at 1299. That seems to be a, a thread right there. This one does give you a skew 80. Not the highest end, but the middle one. And in later videos, I'll break down what those SKUs mean. 16 gigabytes, storage 512. The Inspiron 14 gets the Snapdragon X Plus for a much lower price. They also list Latitude, but that didn't come up yet. Maybe that comes later. HP has the Omnibook X AI PC 78. So this is the lower end one. 26 hour battery life. Come on, really? It is a lower powered SOC, so maybe. This one is the one that's the X Elite 78, 16 gigabytes of RAM on this one, 512 gigabytes storage, and it's 1149, you can customize it. And here's an option I haven't seen the other manufacturers do. This one is included in price for 16 gigabytes on board. If you go to this one, which is the same exact SOC, but you get 32 gigabytes on board, and uh, this is gonna be a package that you can't upgrade later. That's why you have to decide now. It's soldered on, that's how it is nowadays. This one is 1299. So you get more RAM here than the other manufacturers quite a bit more. And if you go to one terabyte, now you're at $13.99. Lenovo has Yoga Slim 7X, which has the Snapdragon X Elite. They don't tell you which one it is though. And it's $12.89 for the version with 16 gigabytes and one terabyte. Also comes with an OLED display. And of course, Microsoft has their own completely redesigned Surface Pro and Surface Laptop. And these were specifically designed with the new chips in mind. 20 hours battery life, this is the one that Satya Nadella uses right here. And you can pre-order the 13 inch or the 15 inch Surface laptop, for example. 9.99 for the 13 inch, wow. Okay, but is that for the Plus or for the Elite? Because both are available here, you can choose either one. So for the Plus, starting price is 9.99. For the X Elite, 13.99. So they're charging quite a bit more for that X-Elite. A lot more, considering the X-Elite chip is like, I think it's like $150 or something like that. It's it's a pretty inexpensive chip compared to Intel. If you go with 16 gigabytes, one terabyte storage, it's $15.99. So this one is pricey in comparison with the other ones that we've seen so far, even Dell. And finally, we've got Samsung's Galaxy Book 4 Edge. You have two different processors you can choose from, the X-Elite at 3.4, or, or the X Elite at 3.8, but I don't know which one is which as far as the SKUs that we've seen earlier. That's 16 gigabytes, one terabyte. The lower frequency chip allows you to pick from a 14 or a 16 inch. The 14 inch one is gonna be 1,349, similar ballpark. It's a little more expensive because you're getting the 512 gigabyte storage. Now we know Microsoft's been making strides towards supporting ARM architecture and Windows for ARM and some of their software for ARM, like Visual Studio works perfectly well for ARM. I made some tests comparing the ARM versus non-ARM. But the XLE chips is promising so much that uh, it's a little hard to believe that Microsoft is gonna be able to catch up and re-architect Windows in such a way that it's gonna take advantage or full advantage of what's available and what's, what the capabilities of the chip are. So stay tuned for that. I got 
some machines on the way and I can't wait to test them out. Finally, we're getting these things and we'll be able to actually see and physically do some software developer related tests. Let me know in the comments down below what you wanna see. Now's the time to ask me before I start doing all my tests. Well, after two, you can ask me to. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon.